Hey guys, in the fast lane here. Today I'm going to be working on this F 2.5 liter Yamaha four stroke outboard. Um, pretty much what's happening is you're driving it and there's no water coming out of the telltale. So basically, either we have a clog or we have a worn out impeller. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift up the lever, which is on this side right here. There's a little lever right here. And you pull up on the motor, and it just sits straight up like that. Make sure all your fuel is turned off on the cap, and then you want to turn it off underneath the motor too. There's a little, uh, there it is right here, kill switch. And this is where we want to look, is right here. There's a little hole right here, and I'm going to get a better shot for you. So on the bottom of the engine, this little hole right here is called a telltale. And uh, basically it's a telltale sign of no water coming out, meaning you got a bad impeller or a water pump kit. Now that assembly, the water pump, is actually over here. It's on top of this uh, lower assembly unit right here. And to get to this, you're going to have to remove these two black grommets. There's one here and one on the other side, parallel from each other. And then we got to take one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts out. And then the whole assembly should slide right out of there. Now this one doesn't have a reverse lever. So you don't have to worry about the lever having to disconnect it from up here. Because um, this is just a little four stroke 2.5. So if you want to reverse it with this one, you just kind of spin it around all the way around and it goes backwards because it has the drip protection for the telltale and it doesn't let it come inside the boat. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to get a flathead screwdriver and we're going to try to pry without you know scratching up the paint like crazy. There we go. We just want to pry it open just like that and inside here you got a lever. Now this one, actually, believe it or not, this isn't the side we needed to take off because this is the other side of the bolt. So I'm going to put this one back on. Well, actually, I'll leave it off in case I got to guide the nut back in. So we're going to go on the other side, and I'll let you know what size socket you're going to need. There we go. And I kind of dropped that down in there, but I'll get that later. So as I'm seeing here, it's just a 10 millimeter bolt. So we're going to take that 10 millimeter bolt out. I have a 10 millimeter with an extension. There we go. So there we go. You're just going to lift it, unscrew it, kind of lift the clamp up off of the main uh, shaft right there. If you're having a hard time getting to it, I believe you can adjust the shift lever. So you want it in neutral. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to remove the other three or four 10 millimeter bolts right here. Now that you've removed your four bolts from the bottom of the lower casing, you're going to take a two by four piece of wood and you're going to smack the back of it right here. There you go. Just loosen it up. You don't want to hit it with a hammer, you know, dent it all up. So now that that's all loose, you got pins in there. Just make sure everything's, we got a shaft. There we go. Here's the entire uh, water pump housing right here. Once you take this off, the impeller's inside there, and this is pretty much the kit. Um, so, just gonna have a quick look here. And we'll check it out real quick. Make sure that this is connected to the hose up top, which it feels like it. So this part right here, this hose piece you're seeing out, it's like a brass copper piece right here. I'm trying to see if you can see it at the same time I'm looking at it. And if you look all the way up in there, it goes way up in there, all the way up to where the shaft gets input. Well, that goes up to the telltale. 
So th if this is clogged, you're gonna have a problem. So I'm gonna pump some air through there. Um, I suggest maybe getting a coat hanger, shoving it up in there. You could get anything stuck inside there. Um, when we open up the uh, water pump kit or housing and look at the impeller, we'll be able to tell a lot better what's going on. I'm gonna shoot some air up in this telltale line right here and I'm gonna feel up top to make sure that it's getting. I'm gonna touch the telltale right here and it's coming out really good. You see where I'm feeling? I'm feeling the bottom of the telltale up top on the bottom of the engine and then I'm blowing the air through the bottom line. And it's flowing really good so there's no clogs in this line up to the telltale. Now we're going to open up the water pump housing to have a good look at the impeller. It's going to be a 10 millimeter. So this comes off fairly easy. We're just going to take all four of these 10 millimeter bolts out. You got one here, 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 and here. Now once you got all your bolts loosened up, we're going to just pull the entire housing straight up and there's our problem right there. As you can see, it is completely ate up. We got pieces inside here, there's a piece in there stuck. Now the key is, is to remember which way this impeller went, but if you can see what I'm seeing, and I'll zoom in for you. If you see this impeller, we're trying to figure out which way this thing was going. I mean, it's almost, it's kinda looks impossible to me. So the impeller just comes straight up. It has a locking tooth right here, as you can see it. So make sure that when you slide it back on, the locking tooth. This impeller right here is pretty smart. The top doesn't have the groove, but the bottom does. So that means that the bottom groove goes down so you don't have to figure out which way the impeller went. If it had a top groove then you could flip it upside down and the blades would go the opposite way. So this is a very smart design where other ones they don't have that. So also before you get gun ho and think you just solved 100% the problem which this is definitely the problem. Inside here there's more pieces gunked up. I'm going to stand it up and kind of maybe tap down on this part. There we go. You're just trying to break the seal. In order to pull this plate up, you have to take the locking key out of the drive shaft. So I'm going to put this back down, if I can, while well, the rubber piece is in there. And you're just going to pull out. And don't want to lose this because you need it. So set that aside. It's a very important piece. And now we can slide it up. And if you look right in here, See all those pieces of rubber? That would be getting stuck up all over again. So we're going to clean that all out. And it's a shame. It wasn't very old of a unit, but that was definitely the problem. So I would get in here and I would clean all this up right here. This bottom piece, actually it'll separate, but I'm not going to separate it because it's sealed up very nicely. And uh, I don't. there's no need to. Here's the Yamaha part that we're getting. Um, the actual number on the part is 6L5. Here is the bad one. You can see the difference here. It's just, it's gone. They say these smaller ones, the blades just bust off of them where the bigger motors, they don't have that problem. They last like 20 years. So it's kind of a shame they should start Teflon coating these things or something. Total of $22. So that was uh, quite expensive, 2226. The part number right here is 6L5-44352-00. So now all of our parts are clean. I'm just gonna take some steel wool and I'm gonna clean the shaft up just a little bit. A little bit of water and steel wool and it'll just clean off any kind of little burrs. I'm going to clean the entire shaft where the exhaust hits and everything. So this will make it a lot easier for the parts to slide up and down the shaft and not damage the new uh, parts, you know, if you decided to replace the entire kit. So I'm just going to slide this all around, kind of clean it up real good. And then I'm going to get a wire brush right here 
on the spline and clean that up. Once your spline's all cleaned up, you're just gonna put a little bit of grease on there. Now don't put it on the top because then that'll cause a hydraulic uh, reaction where you're trying to put it in and the grease is pushing it back out. So just put it only in the splines and then just wipe the excess off. Our bottom plate, and if you don't know which way the bottom plate goes, obviously you can see some wear right here. So that's where the impeller was sitting on. And another telltale would be this side right here is the sharp side. You can tell it's more rigid. And this side is more rounded off, like they're rounded. You can see where they were kind of burrs were taken off. So the rounded side's always gonna be facing up. Now, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of all-purpose grease right here on the bottom, just so that that first spin doesn't really damage the rubber. The rubber doesn't get stuck and kind of prematurely burn off. We're going to slide it down the shaft. Just like this, put it over the shift linkage and straight on down like that. Next, we're going to take the impeller, which is right here. We're going to open it up. And here's another look at the part number before I go ripping it up. You guys get a good look at that. All right. So let me open this up. And like I said, it's very simple. The top on this one has a flat spot where the, there's no keyway. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our keyway in. Now we're going to spin the shaft around until we see this hole right here. And just make sure you can see it. Yep, you guys see the hole right there. And we're just going to put our keyway in. Doesn't matter if you put it in upside down, inside, it's the same length. So now we're going to take our impeller and we want to put the keyway groove down first. We don't want to put this down because obviously it won't lock in. There's no way to put this in wrong. So now we're going to slide it down the shaft. And this is a big part where the grease kind of plays a role. I would put just a tad bit of WD-40 on the shaft. Kind of just run it down there just because um, the impeller kind of wants to stick a little bit with the rubber. So once we do that, there we go. And then you're going to turn your impeller to line it up with the keyway. And just like that. So that's that. That part's done. Now we're on to the housing part. And pretty much for this part right here, you can see that there's two holes and there's two pieces of rubber sticking out here. So you kind of just jam it in there, pinch it, push it in. I took it apart and then you just turn it back and forth until it gets in the holes. And that's pretty much it for that. And this is another self-explanatory. It's real easy. You got two uh, guides right here, pin guides. You got one in here and one here. So pretty much you're just going to line it up and obviously can't go this way because you got the shaft so we're gonna put it down this way before we do we're just gonna take a little bit of grease we're gonna run it on the actual um, rubber o-ring gasket spray some WD-40 in here in the housing because we're gonna rotate the impeller clockwise so just rub it around there rub it on the shaft and everything and then take some all-purpose grease and put it on the rubber o-ring I was told to do this from Yamaha so they said it's better than using the RTV because it just causes a lot of problems with sticky gasket now I mean I would use RTV if I get a leak I'll be ripping it apart and telling them that their idea was bad now we're just gonna slide it down the shaft now in order to do this we have to turn the crank clockwise so let's turn this clockwise so a clock, if it's on a wall, the ticker is going to go this way. So we're going to turn it with our right arm to the left. Our wrist is going to go to the left. 
So let's try that. And there we go. Went straight down. Pretty sweet. Don't turn it counterclockwise because then it's going to ruin the blade. So we got that in there. Now we just take our clamps. It's got little brackets right here. You can't really get it wrong because there's an indentation right here that uh, kind of swivels out from the middle of the shaft. So we got to put those two on there, tighten them down, just kind of hand tighten them pretty well, and then we'll be ready to slide it back into the motor. So we got to take this rubber piece right here and we got to get it to line up with that. So we're going to take the shaft and everything and slide it up in there. And it's a little tricky, but make sure you slide that pipe into that rubber piece on the water pump housing. Once you have your drive shaft lined up with the base of the motor and it's getting in the splines, what you're going to do is this is your shift lever for your forward and neutral. Top pin or the top rod right here is for the actual shift lever and then the shifting mechanism in the bottom lower control part, it goes on the bottom piece. So I got a little snug and I'm just going to take my two by fours, just kind of tap them in. And that's good right there. So you notice it would have fallen out if I hadn't tightened it up a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that right there. Now we're going to put our four 10 millimeters in the bottom. And don't forget our little zinc tablet. And that's it. So our case is 100% flush. And now it's time to make sure this is all the way back to the washer. Going to hand tighten it a little more. Make sure it's straight up because you don't want to pull it. I'd make I'd push it in just a little because when you're pulling it, you don't want it to hit the casing. If it's sticking out too far, it'll nick the bolt right there. So now comes the part where we give it a good tighten. And that should be good. Go ahead and give it a test. And in order to test it, kind of feel it. Make sure it's locking in when it's in gear. And make sure it's in neutral when you put it in neutral. So the last part, go ahead and put your grommets in. If you're having a little problem getting in, just put a little water there. They're a little tough. You got to kind of angle them. And do a little bit at a time. <clears throat> there we go. Then for the end, just kind of push in the middle. And that's it. Now do that for the other side and you're all set. We're gonna pull on our lever. We're gonna drop it down in the water. Make sure it's in neutral. We're gonna pull our primer. Undo the uh, valve on the cap so it can breathe. And like always, don't forget to turn the fuel shut off back on. I've not done that a couple of times and pulled the, my arm out of place practically. <laughs> It'll wear you out, little burn marks in your skin. All right, so here we go. And as you can see, we have nice flow of water right here. It's fitting out really good. You could very well have a clog in the telltale and just stick a coat hanger in there. A lot of spiders like to lay eggs in those holes and clogs it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my Facebook page, website, and Android app. All that can be found on my YouTube channel in the About Me section. I'm in the fast lane, and I'll see you guys next time.